This is Dr. Mayberry, and this is our lab discussion for the skull. You need to know the difference between the neurocranium and the viscerocranium. So the viscerocranium is the face, and the neurocranium is the rest of the skull. So for me, I think it's easier to memorize the bones that make up the face, and then anything else is part of the neurocranium. So that's, I think, the easiest way to go about it. Uh, so take a look at this slide, and you know we'll be talking about each bone in that um, landmark list, those videos, uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about it all here too. You need to know that the skull is ossified through both endochondral and intermembranous ossification, uh, that the inner bone in like the long bones we refer to as spongy bone, but in the skull it has a specific name, we call it the diplo. Uh, but either side, the inside and the outside of any skull bone, is compact bone. So that's the same, uh, but we just have a special name for the spongy bone inside. It performs basically the same function uh, as in the long bones, but it's called diplo. This is a netter diagram. Uh, this is showing you the individual bones, uh, and it labels some of the landmarks. So you do need to know each bone uh, on the skull, especially in articulated um, skulls, uh, though there are some that we'll probably look at individually. Here is a lateral view, same thing, uh, it's labeling some landmarks and, and the bones. You need to know the sutures, uh, so you need each individual suture, which is all on your landmark list. You need to know that the sutures fuse with age. So in this family photo up here, we whoops, in this family photo up here, we have an infant uh, who has not only unfused sutures, but significant amounts of cartilage, uh, like where the anterior and posterior fontanelles are and elsewhere, uh, that you know it's not even ossified yet. Uh, this individual is around 20, so he has open sutures, uh, well he's probably like 25, open sutures uh, in many areas, and as you know, these next generations age, this individual is probably close to 60, has significant, um, significantly more closed sutures, and this individual is close to 80, with probably many sutures that are completely fused. So this allows for brain growth. Uh, there's really no detriment to having the sutures be open, uh, but they do tend to fuse throughout life. You also need to know dentition. So you need to know the difference between different types of teeth, and if I tag one of these teeth on a lab practical, you need to be able to identify what it is. So when we look at the human mouth, or a non-human mouth, when we talk about teeth, we divide the mouth into quadrants. So we separate into upper lower, that's cutting it into halves, and then we cut it into further halves by cutting down the middle. So in every quadrant, we have two incisors, these are the front teeth, so the central incisor and lateral incisor. Then canine, you have one canine, you have two premolars, one and two, uh, and then you have three molars, one, two, three. Okay, so the third molar is the wisdom tooth, so lots of people get this removed, some people it's impacted or it never grew, uh, but this is standard dentition for humans, it's the same on the top and the bottom. So when we write out the dental formula, we write it like this, 2, 1, 2, 3, incisor, canine, premolar, molar, and because it's the same on the top and the bottom, we draw a line in 2, 1, 2, 3. So if you're asked what the human dental formula is, this is what it is, 2, 1, 2, 3 on both the top and the bottom. Uh, this is for adults, of course. So you do need to know those. You don't need to be able to recognize disarticulated teeth, but when they are in the skull, you need to be able to know which is which. So whether that's counting uh, or just being able to recognize them in general, uh, you do need to be aware of that. So that sums up the skull very quickly. Uh, so make sure that you're studying your landmark lists and watching those videos as well.